Thank you, dear Lord, for your kindness and your goodness towards us. Thank you, Lord, for gathering us again together this evening. Lord, so that we might check your words in the fear of what we have around us, what people teach. We pray, Lord, that you guide us, lead us, O Lord, to the glory and honor of your holy name. Direct us in all things. Be with the mouth of everybody so that, Lord, we represent you correctly the way we should. And whatever we do, O Lord, we pray that you use it to bless people everywhere, O Lord, and draw them to yourself. To the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. Good evening, everyone. And um, those who will be watching this later, uh, we we'll say good evening. And uh, we'll, we want to look into something that is very, very important. It is a prevalent uh, culture um, that has gained an entrance into what people believe to be Christianity today. And, um, and this thing, it is good to observe this thing very, very carefully with the word of God and see from the pages of the scriptures how true this thing should be. And um, that culture is um, practiced, is believed to be a very normal thing. And, um, and that is believing that God will uh, not have something to invest or save his power into, but in objects, in things that don't have bread. Or even if it is in objects that have bread, it's still believed to be idolatry from the Bible point of view. But these people believe that uh, God will save his power in things. Um, so people who are following God will not need to come to God boldly. We don't need to approach God with sincerity of heart. All they need to do is just to believe in those things, put their trust in those things. The Holy Spirit, God in heaven, will put himself into those materials so that people who believe in those materials can have salvation or deliverance from whatever it is that is facing them. This is believed to be pure idolatry in the Yoruba sense. In the Yoruba uh, uh, our culture, we know that uh, God, God cannot be reached. Uh, they call that God Olodumare in Yoruba, that God Olodumare. So he cannot be reached. A way to reach or connect with this God, according to their belief, is to is to you know to reach that God, connect with that God through some objects, and that's what we call idol worship. When people bow to stone, bow to this, bow to that, but it has gained an inroad into Christianity. And we will be seeing a few videos, uh, uh, clips that will show this thing and how it has been grossly, uh, you know, done in Christendom today. So yes. Inside this oil is the person of the Holy Ghost holding a fan on one hand and fire on the other. So what is in the oil? Power. Come and say with me, power. power. The Spirit of God is in the oil. Power is in the oil. Man at the age of 70, the wife said, No, a child shall die a hundred years old. I told her that. She didn't know that before. That's not regular scripture. I said, Hold the teeth, I'm coming. And went out to pick the oil and poured the oil inside. I told her that, that there is something inside the oil that generations before us never saw. But God sent me to show you that something is inside it. And I'll be showing you that bit of thing this morning. You remember the little boy, four year old, he told the grandmother, give me the oil. And as she took the, as he took the oil, vomited the live scorpion. That was not there before. People didn't see it before. Last night, one of those testimonies in 1995, one of our elders here, that was sharing a testimony. Now, the wife and the children came to church. It was an anointing service day. 
I didn't believe in going to any such place because he suffered before in some white garment churches. And so the wife came in and anointed everything in the house and was very furious. And in trying to stand up, the back pain he had suffered for years had disappeared. Uh -huh. So his effort to deliver a verdict against their going to some church again in his life, he couldn't carry on. Because he stood up once, and he wasn't used to standing up once, he would have to stand up with effort. He threw a paper on the ground, he bent down and picked it. Uh -huh. What's happening? Before he knew what it was, the wife came in and anointed everything in the house, all the clothes. Ah, what's going on? So what is in the oil? Power. Come and say with me, power. power. The spirit of God is in the oil. Power is in the oil. So inside this oil, is the person of the Holy Ghost holding a fan on one hand and fire on the other. I was brought back with your song to Joss. That song was sung by a choir in Joss in 1996. And there was a woman in that service. And I said, hey, the Holy Ghost has a fan in his hand and fire on the other to clean you up. Clear you out, set you free. You believe that it's a yay. I said, okay, now put a little of this oil. Tell him, Holy Ghost, go on in. Clear me out. Set me free. Send away every unwanted stuff on my inside. A woman was in that service. The husband was not a believer. Got this oil, took a little of this on the cup, went home and was getting troubled on his stomach went to the toilet and excreted a long, winding, living snake. Long, the snake lifted his head like this. He, she shouted, ah! <laughs> as I administered this mystery, a young lady was here. She had a very disturbing odor. She carried about a disturbing odor. She was a smelling lady. Everybody shuts the nose when she passes by. It was a planting of the devil into her life to molest her destiny. And I gave her something on the lead in the church in the name of Jesus Christ. And she has created three strange things. One, a snake. Two, a life seedling like maize growing. And three, a talisman, charm wrapped with. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we, we we already have a, what will, how will I call it uh, a, a picture of. We had what uh, what the what the bishop. We all had what the bishop said. And we can uh, therefore start taking lo a look, maybe little by little. Uh, me, I, I think I think there are quite a few things that are very disturbing. At least that's to put it mildly. Um, I would rather say quite uh, scary, really. Uh, very disturbing to to me hearing those things so I, I don't know whether you people at least you, you since you had or you you heard what you said maybe you can you can chip in what you think and i think uh, yes. since uh, i think sister Yelitu may unmute herself um there's there's a passage in i think in the i think it's in second uh, corinthians if I get, if I remember very well, I think in Second Corinthians, is it chapter two or so? The, the people that have the spirit of God, they judge all things. Uh, yes. Yeah, we we the idea that there's something there's something out of 
out of uh, out of reach. You understand? I, I think it's a uh, either chapter three or second Corinthians or so, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we 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 judge all things. We we do judge all things because we have uh, because we have uh, we have God's spirit. So please let, let me let me have your opinions on some of these things. Starting from the the the, the beginning, the Holy Spirit. Uh, all right, sir. Yes, um, the Bible verse that you quoted, sir, is um, um, second, uh, First Corinthians, First Corinthians, oh, okay. chapter two, verse fifteen. The spiritual well, thank you. judges all things, but he himself to be judged by no no one. So yes, yeah. and um, these people can use this particular Bible passage, uh, and that um, we should not judge him or we should not question him. Uh, unfortunately, that is not what that place is saying. It's just uh, the right uh, way to see this is a true person, someone who is truly saved, judges all things, actually. And we are to judge all things by the scriptures, by the word of God. True believers are to judge all things. All right. So um, what I, the first thing I just see generally about this video is that the man kept, he, he, he claimed that he's bringing something new because he used the word generations before never saw. That's what he said. So he's discovering something new, greater than Apostle Paul, Apostle Peter, greater than those who wrote the New Testament or who witnessed the Lord Jesus. So he's claiming to have something greater than all these people. And um, Apostle uh, Paul used a word, um, a statement in Galatians that whoever brings another gospel, another good news of Christ Jesus, that the person should be accursed. So we just have to be careful when we say we have something new to bring to the table, especially when it has to do with Christian faith. We have to be very, very careful. So, um, so since he said that generations before never saw, so what he's trying to indirectly say is that there is no way you can check me by the word of God. I am above this word. I am above this standard. We have to use another thing to check if what I am saying is truth. And he already gave us the idea of what to use. And but we won't fall for that. He used the word experience. A used experience, like it works, this works. Therefore, it is truth. This person vomited scorpion. Therefore, it is truth. This person vomited snake. Therefore, it is great. It works. Someone whose child wants to die, I told the woman, a child will live as long as maybe 100 years. Therefore, it is truth. So far, it works, then it's truth. Unfortunately, that is not how this world rules the world the world will be in chaos if we think experience should be the the test of truth if we don't believe that god himself should be the one to decide what good is from what bad is then there is going to be a problem so i would just i would just quickly round this part up by saying that okay um robbery i'm robbery sometimes it works for robbers they get money it works for them, whichever way it is. If they plan it well, if all things being equal, they get their money, right? But does that make it truth? Are they living by the truth? No. Fornication, adultery, through it, people get pregnant, right? But that does not make it right to do. That something works, or you are looking for something, you go through this means, go through this pattern, and you get the answer. It doesn't make it truth experience whatever works we know from the bible that a lot of things worked but god was not in it like the rod of uh, pharaoh turning to snake it worked but that's not truth so we can't rely on his experience we have to come back to the word of god and that is why we are here today may the lord help us in jesus name
So um, I don't know if there's anyone who has. No, thank something. you, thank you, uh, John. Thank you. Is um, yeah, since I, I I will I like to play part of the clip again. Sister Eli, yeah, thank you for for muting yourself. I want you to listen to the, to this part of the clip again. Uh, then of course, uh, John too. Uh, after Sister Eli can can come up, just about the first ten or twenty seconds. So inside this oil is the person of the Holy Ghost holding a fan on one hand and fire on the other. Yeah. Yeah, Sister Yele, is it, um, how do you find that, uh, that particular assertion that the person of the Holy Ghost was inside, inside, the oil. inside a bottle of oil? And you, well, praise the Lord. So just like just like you continually say that uh, these people have turned themselves into God. And then the, the, the Bible have said that at the end time that people will be, they will have the twinkling ears to want to hear. And because in Africa here we are used to consultation, we are used to divination, we are used to unless we see the Seeing is believing, and that's why you can have the audacity to say that this oil that he is holding, the Holy Spirit, the, the, the Holy Spirit is inside it, is inside it with fire, is inside it, because it's not written in the Bible. And like I always say, that God will help us to be able to know the difference between the truth and the almost truth. Because it's calling the Holy Spirit doesn't mean that what he's saying is true. Because there's no place that we find it written in the Bible that uh, the Holy Spirit is in this oil with fire and with fan to, to bring out snake. That people, because they drink this oil, they are formating snake. That's purely magic. So that's the way that. <laughs> okay, thank you, ma'am. Um, actually, I, I want to share my screen again. Uh, before we move away from that place, because uh, on inside my Bible, I have, uh, I, I hope you people can see my Bible. I hope you can see my screen. Yes, sir. Oh, good, good. Um, this is Jeremiah. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 24. Uh, I, I hope you can see this word, this place that I'm. Um, very well, sir. Okay. And you, you can read it there. Feel, do not I feel heaven and earth, says the Lord. Okay. Good. The, 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 the God of the Bible says, doesn't he feel heaven and earth? And this is a, this particular uh, quotation is not new. It is not new. It's not uh, what, what I mean is that it's not peculiar. It's not peculiar. God is everywhere. In fact, one of the characteristic of God is that is is uh, omnipresent. In, in fact, you can you can see him he himself he, saying here, "Do not I feel heaven and earth." The God that is omnipresent everywhere is uh, what Mr. Oyedepo said that he had succeeded in bottling, in putting inside an, a bottle. It, it's important that we should let people understand that uh, what we are, the situation we are having is. This is the best way to look at it. Check what we are hearing with our ears, with what we have in the Bible. Mr. Idepo said that in the in the bottle of oil inside in his hand, God was in it. And uh, just as John said the other time, 
we don't have example of such in the Bible. We don't have example of. In fact, uh, in, I think I think it was where during the commissioning, the dedication of the temple of Solomon that God was. Uh, so it was Solomon who was saying it that the heaven, the heavens of heaven, cannot contain thee. I, I, I think I think I think uh, I think uh, I think Solomon said something like that. Okay, that is that is where that is what we have now. In second second Chronicles chapter six verse eighteen. Solomon actually looking at since the majesty of God was inspired. Yes, I have seen the Bible verse. First King chapter okay. 8, verse 27. Fine, fine. And then and then you what you have on your screen is also part of it. Yes, sir. What you have on your screen is also part, but will God in, in very day dwell with men on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. Yes, sir. First King chapter 8, verse 27, repeated the same thing, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So the people, Solomon, who was inspired by God, we have we have record that God actually spoke with Solomon, actually came to Solomon said that the heaven and the heavens of heavens will not contain him, will not contain God. But um, Mr. Edepo, maybe maybe for the sake of uh, the people, maybe we, maybe we could try and hear what he said again, so that we, it's just, it's just a matter of 10 or 15 seconds, so that we compare. So inside this oil, is the person of the Holy Ghost holding a fan on one hand and fire on the other? The conclusion I can come to is that Solomon, King Solomon and uh, David Oedepo, they are not talking about the same person. That is that is the conclusion that I can come to. If anybody succeeds, if anybody can come to a different conclusion, I, I will advise the person to try and get to, get in touch with us. But that's the conclusion I can come to, because since Mr. Idepo is, is affirming so confidently, yes, since Mr. Idepo is affirming so confidently that the person of the Holy Ghost was inside the bottle of oil that he had in his hand. And Solomon, in the Bible, in the Bible that Christians believe is the authentic record of uh, the truth about God. God in the Bible said that the heavens and the heavens of heavens cannot contain him. But Mr. Edipo said that uh, inside the bottle of oil was God. It's uh, we're just saying this so that people will appreciate what we are talking about. That, yeah, John, I'll soon give I'll soon give the floor to you, so that people appreciate what we are talking about. That to start with, to start with, the characteristic of God, as you have in the Bible, is different from the characteristic of God that. David Oedepo is presenting his own God is different from the God of the Bible, the God of uh, the God that you have in the Bible, at least from this uh, from this quote. Yes, John, please go ahead. All right, sir. Um, <clears throat> so um, I noticed that this man is just like um, uh, we've been seeing him doing before in most of his teachings, is very good, like many Nigerian ministers and any other person 
trying to claim that this minister on behalf of God. Um, this is what they do. They pick a verse or his phrase from the Bible and just twist it to look spiritual, to look, yes, very spiritual and Christian, so that people don't, the people don't suspect that something is wrong here. Inside this bottle, or inside this oil, rather, is the Holy Spirit. So what he's saying is that he has successfully trapped the Holy Spirit within a bottle, both with the, uh, um, with the oil, and if you with an unbottle it and just pour the oil or use it for whichever way I, the man of God, has uh, instructed, it will do the work you want it to be done. And you know, people are desperate. Now, the Bible verse that I want to believe he picked is um, um, this uh, Matthew chapter 3, verse um, 11 to 12. So uh, that's when uh, um, John the Baptist was talking about what the Messiah will do when he comes. Now, what Messiah will do when he comes are divided into two. We have the first coming and we have the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, the first coming, which had already happened, um, we are experiencing it now. It has already happened. But they are expecting both the first and the second coming at that time. So it was saying that when the Messiah comes, it will judge the world. It will separate the chaff from the wheat. And he used the word. He said, I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I. That's the, the Lord Jesus, the, the, the Messiah, is mightier. Whose sander I'm not worthy to carry? He will baptize you with Holy Spirit. That is for those who believe for those who truly repent and then um, put their faith in the Lord Jesus. And he will baptize you with fire. For those who do not repent, they will go to hell. Okay, those who, who are rebellious to God. That's, so there is this reward, or I don't let me call salvation a reward or something like that. But there is this end result for the or everyone on earth. Our purpose on earth is to live here on earth and get to one destination. And that destination is either heaven or hell. He's saying that, okay, we baptize you with Holy Spirit. That is for those who are born again. They are born again. They are born of the Spirit. They are baptized in the Spirit. Or with fire for those who are not born again. Now, he reemphasized his word using this uh, agricultural processing. He, he said that... Uh, is we knowing fork is in his hand and he will clear his treasure floor and gather his wheat into the barn but the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire the same fire so this is not baptism of fire where some people claim they are having today it, it, that's rubbish okay this is fire unquenchable fire burning like perishing so that's he not picked up a, a phrase whose whose fan is in his hand and it we it, it we something like that. I use that for Holy Spirit. Now, if that is true, that Holy Spirit is going to do this, no problem. Then we should know that He's calling for judgment, not for deliverance from one a, a snake or scorpion that is inside the humanity. These people are performing magic, and they call it Christianity. And I believe it's not something people should trust. Is bringing this is idolatry in a broad daylight and people don't suspect why he just quoted bible thank you very much yes what uh, what uh, john has said that is actually the correct thing uh when you hear is he, uh, is uh, having a fan in his hand and uh, having a fire on the other yeah when you hear that quotation you you generally think, yeah, there's some passage of the Bible where somebody will be holding a fan in one hand and fire on the in, on the other hand. So the, the bishop must be quoting that place correctly. Let me emphasize that the place where the bishop is quoting, as John said, is uh, Matthew chapter three, verse eleven to twelve. It is uh, verse 11 to 12. Uh, if everybody can can go and read it, uh, you and you'll see that the Bible is not talking about the Holy Spirit. 
The Bible is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, who, who will give second birth to people who believe in him, or we judge those who do not believe in him. Th that is actually the teaching of the Christian Bible. The Savior is also the judge, is the judge of the dead and the living. That is what you have throughout the Bible. So it, it, when you hear the inside the, this uh, bottle, inside this oil is the Holy Spirit, that is one of the very first thing that Bishop Oedepo is not quoting the Bible correctly because the Bible did never said that the Holy Spirit is the one that will do what is quoting. I, I think we can move away from that. Yeah, I don't know whether Sister Yeli has anything to, to add before we move away. No, we can move on, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so let, let me see if, if we can just play a, a, another small part of uh, of the video. Of the clip, let's see. So what is in the oil? Power. Come and say with me, power. power. The spirit of God is in the oil. Power is in the oil. Yeah, actually, I think uh, for whatever this my this my this my the value whatever value we might get from this, these are assertions that uh, we can say. Yeah, we heard it that the, the spirit of God is in the oil. That is against what we have in the Bible. And uh, and yeah, John, please go ahead. Okay, sir. Yes, the spirit of God is in the oil. Um, power is in the oil. So power is in an object. It is not, we must emphasize this very well. It is not different from idolatry. This is idolatry in a broad light. Isaiah 42 verse 8. Isaiah 42 verse 8 says that I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idol. This thing is designed by man, the oil, whatever, is designed, is human production. They produce it one way or the other. And he's saying that God's power, God's power or glory or whatever, what we give you healing, what we do this, is in the oil. It's like a if it's not even as if this is totally going against what God has already said. He said he will not give his praise or whatever to a carved idol. He will not give people reason to trust in object. He will not. He will not give people that reason. In the same Isaiah 44 verse 9, Isaiah 44 verse 9 says that all who fashion idols are nothing. And the things they delight in to do Profit. They are witnesses. Neither, uh, they are witnesses neither see nor know that they may be put to shame. So, what God is saying is that I am not involved in this thing. I am not. They call it witness. They don't see. They don't know. They don't know the Holy Spirit. They claim they are talking about. They don't know Him. They neither see Him. They neither know Him. And these people will be put to shame. So it's just a warning that people should not follow this thing. This is idolatry. It's more than the idol of God. Um, I don't know if um, there is any comment on that because I would also like to talk about Ophni and Phineas. What it talked about before they carried the act of covenant to the battlefield. Because this is exactly what is plain here. Now, God himself directed them to build this ark. He directed them to build this ark. He directed them to, you know, fashion it, the design, the everything God gave them the detail. But they trusted in this idol, not in their repentance, not in the message of the prophets of their time. You know, they did not trust in the Lord. They 
you know, they've, 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 they've um, betrayed God in a sense because they've turned away from him. Now, in the battle with the Philistines, they believe that since I am carrying an object that God actually, you know, God is identified with this object. This is a symbol of the presence of God. Let's carry him. Let's take him to this thing. But they were all defeated. And that one is recorded in the uh, first, first Samuel chapter 4, verse 3 to 11. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you, John. Thank you. Uh, yes. It's, Thank uh, you, Brother John, for that. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Sister Eli. No, I, I just want to say, you know, it, it never occurred to me the way that Brother John just said it now in respect of carrying the ark to the battlefield. And uh, just the same way as us uh, using something to represent the power of God. And we put our trust in that thing that uh, it's when I have the anointing oil or it's when I have the anchor chain, I can take it anywhere the presence of God is there. And which is not. Thank you. Yeah. It's uh, just as John said, uh, which is what we have in the Bible. Uh, that's actually the telltale sign that you are not a believer. The God of the God of Christians is the God is the unseen God. Is the unseen God. And is the God that says that you must not use anything to represent him. In uh, in uh, in Exodus chapter twenty eight from verse three to verse seven, uh, I, I, th I think may maybe we can we can simply read it. If you don't, if you people don't mind, maybe we can we can read the Exodus chapter twenty. Um, look at it. It's it's not really that much. Yeah, Exodus twenty seven. Okay. You shall not take the from name first, of the Lord your God. No, no, no. From 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 verse three, please. Okay, sir. Verse three. You shall not have. Uh, you shall have no other God before me. Okay. You shall not make yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. So um, what I see about these two verses, the first one is don't accept another, uh, don't accept a religion. Let me use that word. Don't accept a religion instead of following the true God. But the second one is saying that even if you are following the true God, don't make something to represent him. Don't say, oh, okay, uh, this image or this oil or this candle or this object or this house is the house of the lord therefore when i enter into the house of the lord all my problem will be solved amen hallelujah no 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 no. don't make something to represent me that's the picture of this uh i do and some do a lot of this today you know they have this cross chain jesus has left the cross he was even buried he has left the tomb he the tomb is empty so he has gone so far and some people are still on the cross still carrying the cross and the cross there is uh, in the bible in, in the sense so people carrying their cross to follow jesus is talking about you know trusting in the lord following god no matter what it is but they are literally carrying this physical cross or, or carrying about this oil or special water of prayer Baba Lola Okay, carrying all these things. Why? Because they know that they think that this one represents God. And that's what verse 4 is saying. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything. God cannot say this thing and ask us to go and do otherwise. No, it doesn't go against his own word. We are Christians. We know that the word of God should be consistent because it is, it is consistent and we have to trust it. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, the, the little I like to say when I look at uh, Exodus chapter 20, verse uh, 3 to verse 6, uh, at least to verse 5, or maybe verse 3, three and 4 alone, uh, is that 
what Mr. Oedepo is describing is a, is, is, is a sort of charm. He's describing the, the, the oil now becoming a physical thing that, that represents. In any case, he actually said that the, the, the inside the oil, inside the oil was the Holy Spirit. Inside the oil was power. So, it, which is very much against what we have in Exodus chapter 20. That you should not, a Christian, a child of God, does not have any physical thing to represent God in any way. And to say that God's power, God's power is encased, is encased in anything physical, no matter what that thing is. Uh, and I, I think that is what uh, that's what people should, should should understand. Anybody who who believes that God's power can actually be located, that God God Himself can actually be localized, that God can be localized in any object, either in water or oil or even inside the physical Bible. Because some people actually, this is where the teaching that if you are having a, if you are having nightmare, then anytime you want to sleep, go and put the Bible on your pillow or under your pillow. It's idolatry. It's the same. It's the same idolatry. That very sadly, that is what uh, we are hearing from the mouth of uh, the, from the mouth of a supposed servant of the God of the Bible. That's what we are having from the mouth of uh, uh, David Oedepo. Let, let me see, let me see if we can, if we can just hear one or two other uh, uh, before. A man at the age of 70, the wife said, no, a child shall die a hundred years old. I told her that. She didn't know that before. That's not regular scripture. I said, hold the teeth, I'm coming. And we went out to pick the oil and poured the oil inside. I told her that, that there is something inside the oil that generations before us never saw. But God sent me to show you that something is inside it. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, um, obviously, uh, if you listen to, to the bishop, that there is something inside the oil that he was holding his hand that generation before us never saw. And the generation that never saw any of those things inside the oil that Mr. Odeko was holding included that of the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the Lord Jesus Christ was never aware. Uh, yes, actually, I want people to pay attention to what their 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 faculties are hearing, their audio faculties are hearing, their ears are seeing. Because people will be judged. The people will be judged by what they think about God, what they think about God's word. Because if God gave you the ability to hear by your ears and to see by your eyes, and you have somebody saying that there's something inside the oil that he was having in his hand that generations before him never knew about. And, and you, 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 don't, um, you don't pinch yourself and say, generations before, this thing is so, is so new that no generation before us in the church ever saw any such thing. And the generation included the generation of the Lord Jesus Christ when he was physically here. Then, and, and you still believe that whoever is saying this kind of thing is actually a servant, a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when people will be judged, when they will be sent to hell, they will have no other person but themselves to blame. That is actually what the reason why we make these videos, so that people will begin to pay attention to what because God, God in His Majesty, God is in His Majesty, forces these people to speak out to say out what they actually believe. 
I, I don't think, I think this is, this is a statement that we cannot allow to pass without putting so much stress on it. Bishop, the uh, said that he, he had discovered some power in oil, in some particular oil, that generations before him never knew. And the generations included the apostles, include, they included Paul, they included Peter, they included John, they included James, they even included their master, the Lord Jesus Christ. And anybody, anybody will, will go and sit down in a winner's chapel and he will say he's a follower of Christ. The person must be deceiving himself. The person, whoever, whoever, and, and the thing is that, generally speaking, just as I said, you only need to pay attention. If you pay attention to, particularly to David Oedepo, if you pay attention to his, uh, to his, uh, to his words, it generally doesn't take, what, what have we done? We, we, have, we, have, we have only played about a minute in the play. Yes, of course, we, we copied it from, uh, from, a, from a talk that he gave. But this thing he has been saying them over the years, and people are not paying attention. Oyedepo has ideas that you cannot find on the pages of the Bible. He knows things about the, spirit, about the spiritual word, about the word of the spirit, that the Lord Jesus Christ was not aware of. Please mind my language. The Lord Jesus Christ never taught those things. And some people will go and sit down before such a person, and they will be deceiving themselves that they are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know whether anybody can have any, any amount of self-deceit that is worse than people who follow the video they follow. And the thing, the thing about, uh, about, about, the video, about these people is that they are generally all connected. That is actually the truth. What you hear today in the matter of David Oedepo, if you listen very well, everybody in their circle, you hear some of those things, one time or the other, from the, from the mouth of Egin Lab, for example, from the mouth of T.B. Joshua, for example, from the mouth of even the Nokadeboye, for example. You hear, because they all work together, they all work in the same circle. One, one time or the other, you might see some little skirmishes among them, trying to, trying to deceive people that uh, T.B. Joshua was not one of them. T.B. Joshua was part and parcel of them. Because they all believe in this. And when we are talking of, of idolatry, we are, actually, we are actually trying to glorify what Mr. Oedipo is saying. This is worse than idolatry. This is this is occultism. This this is satanism. What Mr. Oedipo teaches is actually satanism. For those of us who, who, who grew up in Africa, in the rural part of Africa, even people people didn't grow up in the rural part of Africa who who, who had anything to do with uh, shamans and Babalawo and the rest of them. You 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 cannot tell me that you do, you don't get it that what Mr. Oedipo is saying. They are only available with shamans. So Oedepo is preparing the is preparing everybody to accept to accept shamanism, to accept satanism. I don't know if, if anybody has any other uh, issue in that place before before I move away. Yeah, he said that uh, the, the Bible said that a child will be 100 years or something like that. Uh, before he dies, or all those kind of things, and that the the, the 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 lady didn't know that. Those are, according to what we said before, in line with what we said before, those are aspects of simply throwing God's word about in order to gain false legitimacy. There's the, the only part of the Bible where the Bible says that a child shall die a hundred years. 
It's in the it's in Isaiah chapter five, chapter sixty five, and it's actually talking about the second coming of Christ. So when you hear, yes, I, I told them, I told him, I, I told us so, yeah, yeah, all those kind of things. You get the impression that you get the impression that nobody is dying in you know, Oyedepo's church who was not older than sixty than a hundred years old. People are dying every day, factually, at least at least every every week. You know, they post church. People below fifty, people below forty, people be, below thirty. And, and when you hear the the confident assertion that a child shall die at hundred, you get the impression that. The man has actually he has a lock on life. That he actually has a key. That once he turns the key, once you are with him and he turns the key, people have been deceiving themselves with this man for so for so many years. Because he has been telling them these fantastic lies. This is a man that cannot guarantee the life of his wife. He cannot guarantee the life of his grandchildren. He, he cannot guarantee his own life. And quoting confidently that if you die before the age of 100, you are a child. Because the place where he, is, where he was quoting, that is Isaiah chapter 65, verse 20, the Bible says that even when you die at the age of 20, that means you are cursed. Sorry, at the age of 100, that means you are cursed. Because you are dying too young. That is when the when, that is when the Lord Jesus Christ comes back. That is that is during the, the millennial reign of Christ. Most people today they die before the age of seventy. In fact, the average uh, life uh, life cycle of, of of Nigerians is still is still below fifty six, if I'm not mistaken. So, which means that most members of uh, David Oedipus Church to whom he has told these lies in the last 40 years, most of them are dead already. Most of them, they are already in their graves. Yeah, I, I don't know if you, if, if there's any other comment on that one before. I was saying that the reason why um, the generation before, as he said, that the generation before did not know, did not know these things. I said the reason is because they were busy following the scriptures. First John chapter 5, verse 21 says that little children keep yourselves from idols. So they never knew it because they were busy following God. They were busy following the scriptures. That's why those generations never know that um, Holy Spirit in oil works. Okay? So we too, we should never know that because we are following the word of God. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, John. I actually, I actually believe otherwise. The, the generation that never knew what um, Mr. Debu was saying was the generation of Christians. They were the ones that never knew that power, actual power, actual, actual power resided in oil. But the generation of uh, of occultic people, of shamans, the generation of uh, Hindu gurus, they knew. That, that that's actually the issue that we should we should get very clearly. The idea that they are, that Mr. Odepo is bringing something that never existed before, and therefore is totally novel, totally new. That is not true. What he is in, what's he, what, he, what, what he introduced into the church, and he said the generation before him never knew. It was only true for the generation of Christians. Christian, Christian never had a situation where power resided in any oil. But those are Christians. If you go to shamans, if you go to shamans. They knew that they could do some magic. They, they, should, they, they could do some magical incantations and, and the rest of it. And 
things will start happening from oil or from water or from anything. It's, it's important we should, we should get that. It's not really just because that Christians never know. If there's anything that Christians never had, then the thing is not from God. It's not from Christ. That, that's the little that I want to say in that place. Yes, and uh, what I also want to add, I remember that in those days when we were, when I was practicing all these Hinduism and all that, there's this saying that they always say that sin is believing. And then, you know, it's like when sin is believing, it's like the, the, you, you see it and then you believe it. So it's like when they present to us now that uh, you are seeing this oil, there's this power that is in it, then it helps your belief because it's seen, it's believing. Whereas the word of God is not, we don't see yet we believe God, but their own, because it's occulting, is seen, then you believe. That's why they have to be presenting all these answers and all these things to us. Praise the Lord. Yeah, thank you, man. So, Sister Yale, do you mind if you pray for us? Okay, sir. Yeah. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity once again to, to minister your word unto other people. Lord, we thank you for the knowledge that you have given unto us. Father, Lord, we pray, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, that this, this entrance of your word that is giving us understanding, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that this word will be light unto the part of for as many people that will listen unto this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray, O oh Lord, for that, that grace to be able to, to differentiate between the truth and the almost truth. Father, we pray that you give us this grace and this discernment in the name of Jesus. We commit our other brothers that are supposed to be here and they were not here for one reason or the other. Father, we pray for them and we commit them into your hands in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, Lord. We give you honor. We give you adoration. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank Amen. you, Sister Eli. Thank you, John. Yeah, let, let me stop you. Let me stop the recording. Stop.